Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. We are continuing to take a look at the FPI predictions for every single Power 5 conference. And today we're taking a look at the ACC, a conference that going into 2022 is actually wide open. For years and years and years, this conference was dominated by Clemson. And for many, just like the FPI, Clemson is still the king of the conference. But last year, the Tigers failed to win the ACC. And going into this upcoming season, both divisions are wide open. They are both up for grabs. They're going to be very competitive and they're going to be one of the more intriguing conferences to watch heading into this upcoming season. So we're here to take a look at the FPI predictions. Again, it's not our official predictions. Our gridiron expert predictions are right around the corner. They'll be coming up here in a few weeks. We want to take a look at the football power index and what they had to say about the ACC. So we're going to go ahead and jump into the Atlantic division where at the top they do have Clemson bouncing back, winning the division, and more likely ultimately winning the conference. Last year, the Tigers won 10 games on the year, won their bowl game over Iowa State, but failed to win the ACC, failed to win the Atlantic even. Wake Forest actually won that division. So they expect the Tigers to bounce back in a big way, as many do. Many have the Tigers as a top 10 team to start the year, and they have them winning this division going 11-1, and and in doing so, if they win the ACC, that would put them back in the college football playoff. Underneath them, though, you have NC State and Wake Forest. And we've been saying for a long time now that the three-team race in the ACC Atlantic is Clemson, Wake Forest, and NC State. How those three teams fare against one another, that will determine who wins the division. And last year, again, it was Wake Forest. Um, the FPI right now has it as Clemson. But I will say that I think it's surprising that NC State and Wake Forest are both at 8-4 here. Uh, and I have NC State actually owning that tiebreaker over the Demon Deacons. But I think for both fan bases, considering all the hype surrounding the Demon Deacons and the Wolfpack, considering that both these teams should be top 15 teams to start the year, going 8-4, and four, being three games behind Clemson in the Atlantic, not even close, uh, I think would be a major disappointment for both programs. I think it would be a major disappointment because both these teams have their eyes set on an ACC title, and 8-4 and four simply isn't going to cut it. So that is a bit of a shock to me. Underneath that, you have Florida State. They finally have the Seminoles breaking through and making a bowl game under Mike Norvell. That would be huge for Florida State. They failed to do so under him so far. Uh, came close last year to breaking through and getting to that 6-6 six and six mark. They have them going above that now, going to 7-5. and five. Louisville and Boston College also both making a bowl game. This is about right for the Cardinals and the Eagles, uh, making that 6-7 or seven win mark. Uh, I think both fan bases would be happy with getting back to the postseason. Uh, when you look so more than anything, though, I think Boston College here, that would be the, more, the bigger surprise. Uh, the Eagles still, according to the FPI, not going to be able to get over that hump of that 6-7 or seven win mark. They never really exceeded 7 wins under Steve Adazio. Jeff Halfley is trying to get them to at least the 8 win mark in the regular season. The FPI has them falling pretty short of that, two games short of that eight win mark uh, that they're trying to get to. But if Phil Jerkovic can stay healthy, uh, if the Eagles can uh, maybe play a little bit of the defense, which, you know, happily that's his strength, maybe Boston College can get to at least seven or eight wins in 2022. And finally, Syracuse rounding out the Atlantic five and seven. Uh, the Orange went five and seven last year, just missing out on the bowl game. And this mark right here, guys. Uh, would be disappointing for Syracuse. Sure, they don't have sky-high expectations, but 5-7, and seven, failing to make a bowl game, might spell the end of the Dino Babers era uh, at Syracuse. So that is something to watch out for there. Syracuse, again, falling just short. Over in the Coastal, again, this division, guys, in our eyes, wide open. We think those three teams uh, between Clemson, NC State, Wake Forest can contend for that division title. Over here in the Coastal, even more so wide open because I genuinely believe, I mean, Pittsburgh, Miami, North Carolina, Virginia can all contend for that crown. And more so, it's probably Pittsburgh and Miami that are going to be the top two. And that's what the FPI has as well. They have Pittsburgh, the reigning ACC champs, coming in at 10-2. and two. That's a bit of a surprise to me. Again, we're not here to predict anything. We're not saying Pittsburgh's not going to win 10 games, but I think for the FPI to have the Panthers at 10-2 and two, with the loss of Kenny Pickett, yes, they added Keaton Slovis, uh, but the loss of Jordan Addison, who now transferred out to USC, a handful of lost starters on the defensive side of the ball, the loss of their offensive coordinator and Mark Whipple, all of that, and they still have Pittsburgh going 10-2, and two, winning the Coastal and getting back to the ACC championship game. That might be a little high for some people. Miami, right behind them, first year under Mario Cristobal, they have them going 9-3, and three, just one game away from making the ACC championship game. So they have very high expectations for the Hurricanes uh, after you know, a couple lackluster years these last few seasons. So Miami up there. I think the biggest surprise for me is actually North Carolina at 8-4. and four. Uh, Pittsburgh and Miami, I can see those. 
North Carolina at 8-4 and four is a bit of a shock considering how poorly they played last year, considering they're breaking in a brand new quarterback after the departure of Sam Howe. Uh, you wonder what the motivation, the morale of this team is going to be like, a very young UNC team that loses so much from last year. Again, this is a North Carolina team that was a top 10 team to start 2021 and finish the year, what, 6-7? and seven? I mean, it was an abysmal year for the Tar Heels, and the FPI has them bouncing all the way back and going 8-4, and four, which would be a remarkable year for Mac Brown and Chapel Hill. So UNC 8-4 is a bit of a surprise, I think, uh, for many. A surprise that the uh, Football Power Index would have them there. Virginia, new head coach in Tony Elliott, the offensive coordinator at Clemson, now taking the head coaching position with the Cavaliers. They have them coming at 7-5. and five. Great quarterback in Brennan Armstrong. I think he's going to thrive under Tony Elliott. I think for the Cavaliers, it's a fantastic mark. Uh, Virginia, you know, once the cellar dwellers of the ACC have built themselves up into perennial bowl team, uh, Bronco Mendenhall got them to that point. Tony Elliott is hoping to continue that. 7-5, and five, a chance of eight wins if they win their bowl game. It'll be a great year for the Cavaliers. Then after that, you have three more teams that aren't going bowling, Virginia Tech, Georgia Tech, and Duke. Uh, Virginia Tech is kind of in the midst of that rebuild under Brent Pry. Quarterback questions, major defensive questions, it's going to take a little bit. And while the Virginia Tech faithful would be livid to not go bowling, uh, I think that's something that has to be in the back of their minds. It's something they have to be thinking about going into 2022, that it's not going to be a special year. Uh, I think, honestly, for Virginia Tech, getting to a bowl game would be considered a successful year. Just 6-6 six and six would be a success in year one under Brent Pry. The FPI has them falling just short. Honestly, we would not be surprised if that actually was the case. Same goes for Georgia Tech and Duke. They have Georgia Tech taking a one-game uh, improvement after going 3-9 and nine last year. Jeff Collins not really panning out in Atlanta. Uh, they're not going to be much of anything this year. At least that's not what we think. 4-8 and eight for Georgia Tech and Duke. New head coach in Mike Elko. 4-8 and eight for some might be kind of generous for the Blue Devils. They have major questions across the board. And again, another relatively difficult schedule. Duke, arguably the worst team in the ACC heading into 2022. 4-8 wouldn't be the worst year in the world for Mike Elko. So there you go. There are your FPI predictions uh, for the ACC. Again, we're going to have our official Gridiron Expert predictions coming out here in just a few weeks. We're going to be breaking down every single one of these teams and every single game on their schedule with predictions that we can guarantee will be more accurate and probably more entertaining than what the FPI continues to put out every single year. But the ACC is one of the more intriguing conferences to watch heading into 2022. Uh, so do not miss out on that, guys. Will Clemson be able to re, uh, you know, reclaim the Atlantic? Will Pittsburgh uh, continue to win the ACC? Will they win the Coastal and defend their crown that is all the, those are the million dollar questions that we're really looking forward to as well as this three team race here in the Atlantic that I think will be one of the most difficult and closest races across all the divisions in college football so guys thank you so much for watching us here at the grid iron expert on YouTube make sure to continue to like comment subscribe share our videos check out everything down in the description below again we want you to become a part of our team become a part of of what we're building here at the channel. So make sure to do that. Make sure to become a part of our GE Nation so you don't miss out on any of the college football content we have for you over these upcoming weeks. Because again, prediction season right around the corner. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert.